Ladies and gentlemen, let's rig game into the comment video. Let us discuss Intel's Skylake as well as its upcoming chipset, which has been revealed to be the 100 series chipset. Now, we've actually got a leaked Intel client silicon roadmap, and I can't put it in the video because of copyright since it is leaked. I have, however, got it uh, written in an article, so you can just check out the description if you want that. But, um,. Basically speaking, of course, this is going to be pretty much a business as you'd expect. The Haswell and Broadwell motherboards are not going to support uh, Skylake and, of course, vice versa. So, Skylake is pretty much what you'd expect. Um, the 100 series, which, by the way, is an internal name. It's not been clarified or confirmed to be called that to the public. But regardless, let's just call it the 100 for now. Um, if you have inf if you have information or are familiar with the 900 series, it's pretty much business as usual, and is pretty much just a logical step forward in that regard. It's still going to be a single PCH piece of silicon, and there's basically going to be different variants um, by simply toggling certain features, in other words, enabling, disabling them, depending on either the market and or um, how much you're willing to spend. And there's also going to be four different types of socket, but they basically fall into two different flavors. I have wrote this all out on the article because this might get a bit confusing because of the acronyms, but still. The first, and the one that most of us who are enthusiasts are going to want anyway, is going to be the S, sorry, the SLKS, which is going to be a standard LGA socket. In other words, just like you can say, put in a 2500k um, from say a 2500 or you could put in say a 2600k from a 2500k or you could put in a 4770k if you've got a 4670 it's pretty much exactly the same in other words it's a completely separate package you simply just unslot one put the other chip in pretty simple stuff but there's also three variants of BGA now these are basically all soldered to the board so you can't remove it um, but obviously there are instances where um, these are going to be useful for example uh, ultrabooks and so on the first actually is targeted towards um, ultrabooks and that would be the SLKU it's ultra low power because obviously when you solder these things it actually takes you get this power leakage and so on the next up is SLKY now that's mainstream BGA, so this is going to be like for very small form factor systems, ready-made PCs, that type of thing. Once again, you cannot remove the CPU. And finally, the last one is SLK-H, yet another of BGAs. This one is made for regular net notebooks, so in other words, not the very thin compact ones, this is made for the standard everyday ones. It has been confirmed pretty much that we're going to be seeing a 14nm process and it's going to be using DDR4 memory. So if you're hoping to carry over your D DDR3, well, sorry, not going to happen. Um, this is becoming more important because obviously with Skylake we're going to be seeing an even more powerful uh, GPU and quite frankly DDR3 is not enough to power um, high-end GPUs as well as the CPU anymore. It's just starting to lose um, the performance battle and this is something that AMD have noticed with their APUs as well as even some of the higher end uh, GPUs in Haswell are also starting to have this issue if you're going with like lower end DDR3. You're also going to be seeing the return of Thunderbolt. No, nothing to do with James Bond. Of course, it is the transfer technology and it's going to be improved and it's also going to be um, enabled by the Alpine um, Ridge controller. And it's also going to be a wireless connectivity um, up wazoo. There's going to be a Snowfield Peak, which is Wi Fi Bluetooth, Douglas Peak, which is Y Gig and Bluetooth. Fine Peak, uh, sorry, Pine Peak, which which is Y Gig XMM seven two six X four G LTE controllers, and finally and or Jacksonville. Uh, Jacksonville is the GBE wired Ethernet controller, depending on the processor and um, motherboard in question. So, uh, sorry for all the acronyms there, but as I said, I have done as an article. If you happen to miss some of those. Now, before 
You raid your pig piggy bank. I can hear you searching around for the hammer. Don't try to deny it. I can hear it. So, before you do that, bear in mind there's no exact release date yet. It actually could be possible that this could even slip to 2016, despite the slide pointing to 2015. How? Well, because there's no estimation of the quarter it's released, it's possible it could be, say, late November or some point in December. And this could mean that by the time that us as customers, when you take into account holidays, slippages, shipping, blah, 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 it's possible that we won't get our grabby little mitts on this in 2000, until 2016. And obviously, this is assuming that everything moves smoothly, like a well-lubricated machine. So, of course, if you are hoping to basically plop your, as I've said already, your Skylake CPU or our new Skylake CPU into an existing Haswell, it's not going to happen. You're also not going to be able to take your Haswell processor or Broadwell or whatever and plop it into your Skylake motherboard as kind of an interim step. And it also means that most likely DDR, there's not going to be any variant of DDR3 that's going to work on these motherboards. So you're also going to have to cough up for DDR4 memory. And so it's going to be a bit tricky if you're a PC gamer. Here's my advice um, for those of you who are wondering what should you do. If you've got a CPU that's pretty good, and by which I mean something along the lines of a good AMD CPU um, or a good Intel CPU, for example, the 2500K or Ultra equivalent, basically, something that you know is not going to be too bad, or even maybe something like the i5-750 would be reasonable, or the i7-920, um, or something along those lines. Uh, for AMD, of course, you've got something like the FX8 or the FX6, something like that. You're probably going to want to keep as is. It's um, for now, I'm, I'd personally recommend at this point, you know, you could certainly go with Haswell. Um, it's not like it's a bad system. I'm loving mine. But if you're unsure, if you've not, if you're not made of cash, then I'd recommend to kind of keep as is and just wait for the Skylake platform. You're probably not going to be seeing super duper performance increases from something like a 2500K to like a... I don't know, pulling out my butt like a 4670K, just for example. Anyway, you know, you might see like 20%-ish. And for gaming, it's a bit trickier as well, because obviously you've got DirectX 12 coming along, um, which apparently, of course, is going to be backwardsly compatible with current graphics cards, but we don't know because Microsoft haven't announced it. And trying to get information out of Microsoft, a little bit like Valve or any of these guys, is basically the equivalent of me going down the backyard turning over a few stones and trying to you know strike it with oil with but just by using like a trowel or something it's not going to happen they're not going to give you that information until they're good and ready unless there's leaks so basically we don't know what features are going to be out so just because a card is backwardly compatible for low level we don't know what features are going to be missing so even shopping for gpus is a bit tricky uh, at this point but the thing about gpu of course is that well, they change so fast anyway. When it comes to CPUs, it basically means an entire system change. And I always find it that much more of a pain in the butt when you've got to change your memory. You've got to change the entire motherboard. And of course, in this case as well, you've got to change your CPU. So I'm not trying to put you guys off if you're planning an upgrade. You know, go for it if you've got the cash. I'm just warning you if you're someone who, you know, it's kind of hoping to just do a skip and a jump to Skylake, this is not going to be the case, which we kind of knew anyway, but this is just further confirmation of that. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll uh, see you soon. As I said, check out the article. If you do want more information on this, you could see the client roadmap that I just can't put in this video, but hopefully you've enjoyed the video anyway. I'll see you soon. Take care and bye for now.